Hi everyone, I'm Dawn Breen, Associate Curator of Decorative Arts at the Frick Pittsburgh. We are working from home, but are attempting to bring the museum to you, wherever you may be in these extraordinary times. So we've been experimenting with some new formats for presenting our digital content. And I'm looking forward to sharing the virtual stage with my colleagues and spending some time exploring Eagle Rock which was the Frick family's summer estate in Prize Crossing, Massachusetts. This is going to be the first in a four-part video series about Eagle Rock. Um, I'll be talking specifically about the architecture and design of the house, as well as how the Frick family used it. So let me pull up my screen because I have some wonderful images I want to share. The Frick family started vacationing on Boston's North Shore in 1902. To give you an idea of the area's reputation, it was frequently referred to as Boston's Riviera. It was on par with other vacation retreat hotspots like Newport, the Berkshires, or Long Island's Golden Coast. If you're not familiar with the area, here is a map to help orient you. The red dot is Pride's Crossing, and you can see it in relationship to Boston, as well as Cape Cod and Newport down at the bottom of the map there. The area was really a favorite spot of many of Frick's business associates and members of the industrial elite. For several summers, the Fricks rented houses for the season, and on the screen, you see an image of Woodrock, which was the estate of Herbert Sears, which the Frick family rented in 1902 and 1903. But all the while, Henry Clay Frick had his eye on a property of his own, and in 1902, he purchases three parcels of land on Hale Street overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. He hired Boston architectural firm Little and Brown to design the house and outbuildings as well as the grounds. The connection with Little and Brown would prove to be quite fruitful, as the firm was very cozy with Ogden Codman Jr., an interior decorator who had teamed up with author Edith Wharton to write The Decoration of Houses in 1897. Codman and Wharton's advocacy of a streamlined neoclassical aesthetic revolutionized interior design in the early 20th century. Their philosophy was based on simplicity and elegance. They looked to the past like so many of the revivalist and historicist styles that have prevailed during the 19th century, but they stressed authenticity, harmony, and architectural proportions. They were very opposed to superficial ornament, or what Wharton termed a thermopylae of bad taste. In other words, the eclecticism of the high Victorian style was deemed outdated and no longer representative of the patrician upper class's aesthetic taste. Arthur Little and Herbert Brown were very hip to this shift. Along with Codman, the trio became known as the Colonial Trinity, and Little and Brown made a careful study of Boston's neoclassical buildings as the new style emphasized historically accurate designs. But they had a distinctly free and loose interpretation of colonial, which you can see here in their proposed design for Eagle Rock. Construction broke ground in 1904, but the family wouldn't move in for two more years. This slide shows some really wonderful photographs taken by Helen Clay Frick. They come from a photo album in the family archive at the Frick Art Reference Library in New York, and they give us a wonderful peek at the progress of the house and the outbuildings. As they did with their other residences, Frick and, uh, and his wife Adelaide monitored every step of construction, scrutinizing choices, approving invoices, and selecting various trims and furnishings. Frick's standards were exacting, as always. Though he had selected a leading architectural firm, he didn't remove himself from the process entirely. In November 1905, he wrote to Little, I want the place kept simple as possible. That suits my taste. And as to whether it will be approved by McKim, Mead and White, Carrere and Hastings, or Mrs. Edith Wharton doesn't matter to me. A few weeks later, he wrote, after looking at the two photographs you sent me, I was rather alarmed. While it probably is beautiful, it is far too elaborate to suit my taste, as I have always explained to you. 
Frick wrote often that he wanted the interior decoration at Eagle Rock to be, quote, severely plain. This is certainly not a phrase that could be used to describe Clayton, their family home in Pittsburgh. And quite frankly, I'd understand if you argued that it doesn't describe Eagle Rock either. But that is the terminology that's used in the period to describe that pared down neoclassical aesthetic being championed by Wharton and Codman. So although he didn't really care to impress Edith Wharton, I think she would have been pleased with his choices nonetheless. And here's the finished exterior. For something that Frick envisioned as simple, the architecture is quite ornamental. It's incredibly grand, this massive neo-Georgian facade. The house was finished in time for the family to move in in the summer of 1906, and they threw a housewarming party that September. Eagle Rock had an astounding 104 rooms compared to Clayton's 23 and it cost reportedly $500,000 to build. The estate spanned 25 acres with a sprawling naturalistic landscape with romantic vistas and winding paths. After passing through an imposing gate and making your way up the long curving drive, this impressive exterior appeared in the distance. I love this photo collage that shows Eagle Rock from all different angles. Um, I also really love the caption at the top right that says it's showing off its massive beauty. Such a great phrase. Whereas Clayton was a family home purchased relatively early in his career, Eagle Rock was built at the height of Frick's wealth and it was built as a summer retreat. It's for entertaining. It's a home for pure pleasure for the Fricks, their children, their grandchildren, and their friends. So you see here an elevation of the garden front, which overlooks the Atlantic Ocean, as well as a floor plan of the ground floor. And I know you can't read these details, but I just want to give you a sense of how massive this house was and how much space and the scale of the rooms. The first floor alone, they have this expansive main hall that cut through both ends of the house inside that bow-shaped portico, a huge dining room just to the left of it with a library, a drawing room, a billiard room, a den, and a loggia, among many other rooms, as you can see. There was a grand six foot wide staircase with black and gold marble columns and a brass railing that led upstairs to the family rooms on the second floor. Guest rooms occupied the third floor with domestic staff and storage on the fourth. There was even a passenger elevator to carry the family up and down these four floors. The basement contained a Grecian style plunge bath with pipes for fresh or salt water, in addition to a wine room, servants dining room, a kitchen and other workspaces. So let's move into the interior. Frick hired Cotier and company who redecorated the reception room and parlor at Clayton in 1904 to now oversee the preliminary design of Eagle Rock's decor. They provided antique and reproduction furniture, porcelains, bronzes, rugs, and tapestries. Frick's relationship with art dealer and decorator Joseph Dufin is in its nascent stages at this point, and Dufin supplies some objets d'art for the home as well. And of course, he would go on to play a pivotal role in the development of Frick's collection in New York. And in the last segment of this series, you'll hear more about the artworks that you see in these photographs from our chief curator, Sarah Hall. So what was life like at Eagle Rock? From the photographs in the family archives, it looks like one of endless fun and idle pleasures. There's horseback rides and carriage drives through the grounds, afternoons on the beach, trips to the golf course, croquet on the lawn, evenings of whist, bridge and poker, parties, concerts and dinners. But I think Life at Eagle Rock is best described by a wonderful collection of home movies that were taken in the late 19 teens and 20s and digitized by the Frick collection, um, where you can see the Fricks and their family uh, and their friends enjoying the house. So I'm going to pull that up here.
I just love those videos. I think they are so charming. And I want to thank the Frick Collection for letting us show them in this presentation. Um, of course, you know, this life of leisure necessitated a great deal of work to maintain. So in the next video in this series, you're going to hear from our Director of Learning and Visitor Experience, Amanda Gillen, who's going to share some insights into the domestic staff who worked at Clayton. So thank you so much for following along with me and learning a little bit more about Eagle Rock. I hope to hear from you. Please send your comments and your questions to us and look forward to the next video in our series. Thanks so much. Bye.